social literacy, the development of social skills, knowledge, and positive human values that enable human beings to act positively and responsibly in range of complex social settings. It is also the knowledge of how to behave and treat other people in a way that is morally upright, just, and equitable with a view of promoting positive and productive relations that are free from unfair prejudices, hate, and discrimination. Peers and schools play a formative role on the social skills development of children. These social skills are often expressed as consisting of three interrelated components which are the social perception, social cognition, and social performance. Social skills is the ability to interact with others in a given social context in specific ways that are socially acceptable or valued and at the same time personally beneficial, mutually beneficial, or primarily beneficial to others. We have here some examples of the fundamental principles of relating well to others. First is the greeting. It is the first step in social interaction, which is greeting to someone. Greeting others is done not only with words like hi or how are you, but with facial expressions, tone of voice, and gestures such as a nod or a wave. Second is initiating conversation. This requires good listening and attention skills, as well as the ability to take turns and probe for missing information. Third is understanding the listener. Once a conversation is initiated, it has to be maintained. In order to do that, it is important to understand the audience one is talking to. Fourth is empathizing. It means that one is able to feel what the other person feels. Empathy allows one to really connect with other people. Fifth is reading social cues. It is very important to read social cues in a conversation. Cues are the hints and signals that guide us to the next thing to say or do. Sixth is previewing or planning. Conversations also requires that one previews or thinks about what effect the words or actions may have on the listener before she says or does them. Seventh is problem solving. Problems and conflict are often a part of social interactions. Someone may not agree, get angry, insult, or become aggressive at something that one says. How one reacts to these conflicts depends on how good her problem-solving skills are. And lastly, apologizing. Everyone makes social mistakes at one time or another. A person with good social skills is confident enough to make a sincere apology for her or him error. This is a courageous act and is the quickest and easiest way to correct a social blunder. The role of parents and teachers in teaching social skills to children. Parents typically play the major role in teaching children social skills. Parents can directly teach social skills by modeling, role-playing, and providing opportunities for their child to rehearse and practice new skills. They should encourage and praise the child for successfully using a new skill. While teachers do not have to teach a class in social skills, they can take advantage of every opportunity to help children improve their social skills. They should be alert to teasing and bullying and aware of children that are rejected or ignored by their peers. Issues in Teaching Social Literacy First is Subjective Standards of Morality The natural outcome 
of postmodern philosophies is that truth and morality are considered subjective and open to individual interpretation. This can be seen in the current culture where actions and behavioral patterns that were once considered bad have now become acceptable. Second is human nature. While we would all like to believe that people are inherently good, experience has thought us that the inherent goodness of humanity is, at best, unreliable. Sometimes it is there, often it is not. In other words, we insist that others be judged according to a fixed moral standard but invoked a subjective one when our behavior is questioned. Third is situational awareness in the workplace. It is being aware of what is happening around you in terms of where you are, where you are supposed to be, and whether anyone or anything around you is a threat to your health and safety. Fourth is social intelligence and technological communication. Text, speak, and technology use have affected many young people's ability to communicate, while email has deformalized much of the communication process. Students still need to ensure their writing denotes respect and provides enough context for professions to really respond. In addition, text speak has reduced students' ability to communicate using correct grammar. And lastly is social intelligence in traditional communication. While email has taken over as the primary method of communication, traditional modes of discourse still exist. For example, many employers still expect cover letters in addition to resumes and the lack of a thank you note for a gift is often perceived as more than a simple social oversight. An ability to craft these types of documents illustrates an understanding of social expectations and denotes a level of respect or appreciation.